Hello, everybody. <laughs> I see several people here already from Pennsylvania, Germany, UK, Spain. Good morning, everybody. I feel like I'm on a cooking show. <laughs> um, I've got a new setup here. If you see me looking here, it's because I've got the comments down here because I'm far away from my computer. Let me know if you can hear me. The comments are a little delayed from YouTube to here. So let me know. Let me know if it's all working. I have the mic thing going, hopefully. <laughs> We're cooking up magic. <laughs> Yay! Welcome to your first live, Candice. <laughs> Okay, the sound, I've already got one good. Oh, I've got two goods on the sound. So that's awesome. Last month, we struggled with that a little bit and um, my patrons were awesome, helped me during my live stream and we figured out there was this echo cancellation thing that I just had to turn off. So, that's great. <laughs> Hello from Russia and Virginia. Yay! Okay, so this is my new setup, and I've kind of rearranged everything, uh, especially for the Beetlejuice build, which is going to be my focus next week. Um, I'm going to be starting, hopefully, on the first floor, and so I need a lot of space, and working at my desk, which is where I typically work at, was just it was getting cramped and especially now that I'm working really hard to get my shop running anytime I had to fill orders I had to clean up my desk so that I could do the process through all the orders so now I have this workspace which I can keep all of my mess on and then I have my desk which I can do all the admin stuff I need to do for my shop and my editing and so it makes the space a little bit more cramped but I think overall it should be a little bit more functional. <laughs> Hi from Croatia and Huntsville and Eastern Shore, Virginia, Austin. <laughs> Looks like you're on the cooking channel. Yes. Um, <laughs> I actually had this table. This is like a metal um, table it has like a little shelf down here and everything and I had it previously I had a whole dollhouse the entire dollhouse filled up this whole table it was huge it was a gorgeous house but it was it kind of started around the time as the Adams family and both doing both projects was just way too overwhelming that was actually going to be a clue house based off of the game clue and the movie clue which I love um, but I just, I realized I had to focus on one huge project at a time because it was just too overwhelming. So I ended up donating that project to a family that was really excited about it. So they have that house now. I got the table back out. Um, so I didn't have to purchase anything, which was really nice. And I'm just going to be using this for now if I decide I need something a little bit wider because it's kind of thin. And I imagine Beetlejuice House is going to be wider than this. I don't really know. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what needs to happen. <laughs> yeah, cramped is okay if it's user friendly, <laughs> for sure. Okay, so the other thing I have here is my iPad. And I'm hoping this will help me give some closer up shots. And so I'll kind of show you what that looks like. And let me see so you're gonna kinda get a close-up shot of me or my arm so I can switch this to this camera and then I can kind of rotate it down like this and then you guys can see what I'm doing up close it's a little bit backwards <laughs> so that'll take some getting used to or I just need to figure out how to switch the camera but I will let you know when the cameras like this it's really hard for me to see the comments so I may just kind of have to catch up with the comments a little bit while I'm doing some detail work on miniatures so let me go back to the other thing while I'm talking there we go so 
this is the new setup. Let me know what you think, if you think it's going to work. I don't want to make anyone dizzy by using this other camera as kind of the close-up camera, but um, I was getting to the point on the Fairfield where it was getting really hard for me to show you what I was working on inside of the house because I was turning it every which way and then uh, it was just getting difficult to like lay it on its side, especially now that it's kind of finished on the outside. I don't really want to do a lot of like rolling it around on its side. So I'm hoping what I can do is work on something and then kind of, um, you know, show you here. So what I think is happening, I think my comments are stuck. Oh, there it goes. It's starting again. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Adding plywood to expend this, extend the space for a larger Beetlejuice house might be good. That's true. Could definitely do that. <laughs> um, hello from South Florida. I'm doing a 3D puzzle called Fantasy Villa. I'm going to glue it together and make it a similar style that you do now. I finally figured out how to assemble it. Oh, that's cool. I, ha I used to have a 3D puzzle. It was really fun. I enjoyed it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've done a few upgrades since the last live stream and so I, I left a list, I have a list of everything I did. I'm going to try and show you with the up close camera in case you're building the Fairfield along with me just so you can kind of know my thought process of what I needed to do, what I did do, and how I fixed, kind of fixed some of the problems that I had going on. So one of the things I needed to add in was this top floor. I ended up cutting my own top floor because um, I wanted to do this opening. So it's going to be like an attic opening down to the second floor. And the reason for that is it's going to add a lot more light into this dark area. It's going to have more natural light. So I haven't decided if I'm going to put working lights in here, but I probably need to make that decision pretty soon. <laughs> But anyway, I had to get this um, floor in. So before I could even put the floor in, let me go ahead and grab the detail camera and hopefully we can do this easily. Don't mind me while I'm trying to make sure that I do this as smoothly as possible. Okay, so what I did here Okay, <laughs> there is a door back here, and then there is a window over here, and then there's doors along this wall, and then there is a window right there. So what I needed to do was go ahead and finish um, installing those windows and making sure there's these uh, trim pieces that go around the window and I had to make sure that the trim was put in before I put the roof on because it was going to be almost impossible for me to work in there after everything is finished. Um, if you see this little light coming through here, that's because I put a door here that has like a little transom at the top of the door. The next thing I did was put the crown molding in and this was actually a very difficult process and the reason for that, let me see if I can just, nope, I'm, I'm going to have to get an iPad stand I think that's easy to move around. Uh, the reason that was difficult is because all the lines on the walls were looking not the same. So I took a stick and I don't know if you can see these markings right here. I marked out um, how tall I needed or the height that I needed my trim to be. And then I used that and I went all the way around all the walls, all the way over here. And that made sure that my trim was the same height from the floor that everything else was. So all the trim ended up being the same height. So I'm going to put you back over here for a second. <laughs> it's 
So uh, that was our first attempt with the detail camera. Let me know if that was like a little bit too much, too wobbly, or um, I did get an iPad arm. It's like the snake arm, but it was more wobbly than my hand because if I just barely like touched the table, the whole thing just like wobbled. So it's just not very stable. I'm gonna have to get something a little bit more stable. Uh, this, what is the streaming service? I'm using uh, StreamYard. Oh, let's see. Can you save your compound with glue mixture in a jar for it later? I am the first time viewer. Uh, I lost. Oh, first time viewer from the Netherlands. Hi, Deborah. Um, I have not tried to save it. Well, actually I have. I've tried to save it like um, in the container that I mixed it in and then I just put it into um, or like put something over the top to keep air from getting into it. And I, I wouldn't suggest trying to keep it more than a week. Um, yeah, so a, a week maybe. And then after that, you're kind of risking some mold growth. So after that, I'd probably toss it. Uh, let's see. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to your first live stream, Alice and Steven. Yes, scrapbook paper is great for wallpaper. Um, the next thing I need to tell you, so I talked about the crown molding and I don't know if you were able to see very well. Let me come around to this other camera, see if you can see better. Maybe not. <laughs> Uh, but this piece like sat on the floor and then there was a marking where the underside of the crown molding should be and the upper side of the crown molding and then I just went around all the walls so that I could mark on the actual house where everything needed to line up. So once I had done that then I installed all my crown molding around the wall and then I knew that my floor would sit flat once it was glued to the top of that crown molding. So before I glued my wall in, or my, my floor, this third floor here, before I glued that in, I decided to do a test run on the popcorn ceiling idea. Because I had several ideas come in, and the one that I thought, well, that I had the stuff for, and I thought would probably go the smoothest for me was to use sand. And I'll show you a closer up in a second of um, what the label says here. And I use sand and just paint and painted on the underside of the ceiling. So when I was using uh, the close up camera, I don't know if you could tell, um, but it was, it had the popcorn effect. Now the idea we had for the kids room, which is on this side of the house, is to do a glitter popcorn ceiling, which I thought was a really fun idea. This is gonna be the most exciting, colorful, teenagery type room from with 70s, 1970s inspired. And so we are going to try and do a glitter popcorn ceiling for this room in the live stream today. That's probably gonna take some time to dry. So my other plan for today is to work a little bit more on the attic. Now the attic has um, kind of been waiting for me to put in this third floor. So once I got the third floor in permanently and glued it in, then I could move to the attic space. Let me try and do up close detail camera of that as well. I didn't see anyone say that it was, let's see. I like the split screen, but the view was a little focused for the close up. Okay do the split screen. So like this. Do you want me to stay with the split? We'll see. We'll see. If I'm doing something specifically close up. Okay. So what I did here, the other problem is that <laughs> the camera's backwards for me. So I'm, my brain is having a hard time with this. Okay. We're just going to go like this. Come on camera. There we go. So what I did is I have a whole other 
um, video where I show you how I made these windows and there's a pattern if you're making the Fairfield and you want these windows um, you can go ahead and um, I think the title of the stream says windows somewhere in there but I found some newspaper print wallpaper this is print that's specifically made for real life and um, see if I can get Okay, this is probably going to just take more brain power and practice on my part. Uh, but I just um, took the picture of the wallpaper sample and then I put it into Photoshop and made it repeat and then printed it. Now it does have a repeating pattern, so if you look really closely, you can completely see that it is um, yeah, repeating, but I think I'm going to cut out some individual pieces of newspaper and then post over it so that it doesn't look so much the same and looks like hopefully actual wallpaper. So let me show you the rest. And then over here, you might remember that the tower wall, um, we wanted to extend it. So what I did is I took some mat board and I used two layers of mat board. I glued it together before I cut it and then I cut out the shape of the tab that's supposed to be for the back of the tower and then I glued it in place. So this is extending the wall. And I'll show you the other side here on the interior. I had to extend both walls here so that they would attach to the attic because otherwise that room is completely closed off and once you put the roof on you can't um, get to it anymore and I just used the roof as a line to know what the angle should be. Okay so I'm going to go back to my comments and see if anyone has <laughs> any questions or complaints about the videography. Um, let's see, flip the screen, I might do that, that might, let's see, um, camera and mic, back camera, okay, so now you're getting a view of the messy side, but hopefully that will help me show close-ups a little bit later. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Bye, Anna Mama. Oh no. <laughs> Hi, A for Apple. Okay, so that's all that I have done since the last live stream. It actually took me a while because there was a lot of painting of the window trim and the door trim and the footboards and the is it footboards, baseboards, and the crown molding. So um, it just, it took me a little bit to get done. It's one of those things you just kind of have to power through, especially when it's construction type stuff. It's not like the fun decorating stuff. It's like the, okay, I have to make this function type stuff. But I'm glad that it is finished. So now the next thing I'm going to show you, I think, yes, that's all that I had done since last time. Oh, I will need to turn the camera around for this part because luckily it's pretty easy to turn around because then I can't see the comments. So I am going to face you down towards my workspace here. I wish I could just like flip the front camera. That would be nice or the back camera or whichever one I'm using. <laughs> uh, love the live stream. How much pre painting of materials do you do? Well, I'll show you what I prepared for today. Okay. Let me know if you want me to switch to just the detail cam, but I'll leave the front cam up for now. But if we need more space, then I'll, I'll do that. This way I have to use this camera because so I can see the comments. <laughs> Otherwise the comments will be on the back of the iPad. I went ahead and made a pattern. So you can see the pattern here. And this is going to be for 
the teenager's room that I mentioned previously because we are going to be making a popcorn ceiling with glitter for that room. And so what I do is I take scraps of paper and I put it in there and then I just tape over the edges and this helps me know that I have an exact copy of the ceiling pattern and it's going to be so much easier to work on the ceiling flat on my table than it is inside the dollhouse and I can just glue it inside. I had someone in one of my last videos um, that was concerned about my use of paper to do this and they didn't understand which is you know if you're new to my channel you know you may not have seen me do this before they didn't understand why I would waste paper uh, from their viewpoint instead of just measure. Well the reason I do this and the reason I believe this method creates less waste is because when I measure something there's always that tiny bit of human error that comes into play uh, because even when I you know I've worked with a ruler for my professional career just for years and I still mess up measurements and also specifically in the Fairfield and also in the captain's quarters not all of my angles are perfectly right angles and so if I didn't do the pattern method I would most likely end up cutting my final material over and over and over again because I keep messing it up. So that's my thought process. I mean, it's a fair, it's a fair question if you're new to the craft and you're new to miniatures to be concerned about the waste of material in doing this. But I find that I waste a lot less of my final materials with this process. So you can definitely decide which way you want to do it, but I just wanted to share my reasoning for the way I do it. looking at comments. Go to the iPad settings, scroll down to camera under composition. There is a setting called mirror front photos. Oh, okay. All right. Awesome. I will look into that. This is definitely, I feel like I've been doing a lot of experimental uh, streams with y'all. So I am sorry about that. Uh, but it's all kind of figuring out the best process for filming and doing live miniatures because before I was at my desk but now things are getting bigger they're getting a lot bigger <laughs> so what I'm going to do um, and maybe if I need to take a break from the Fairfield I might live stream some Beetlejuice material or some Beetlejuice process um, stuff that I don't need to have for a final video so I want to be able to have the room to do that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pattern that I took from my ceiling and all this is is just little squares of paper that I just put on the ceiling and then tape together to know that I have a perfect pattern of my ceiling. Victoria says the pattern method works well and I find that it that I too waste less materials. I have used post-its before and you can reuse them. It's a great idea. Yes, use post-its or also use your junk mail. Um, we all get junk mail <laughs> that comes, you know, all the time. And just, you know, and sometimes they send really nice materials. I'm going to face this way, I think, so my hand's not in the way. I'm just going to be copying this. Uh, I'm just going to be copying this pattern that I, the paper pattern that I took from my ceiling and putting it onto, this is just some recycle um, food packaging. This is going to be my ceiling material. Uh, now I forget what I was saying. Oh yeah, a lot of times in junk mail, they send like really nice uh, cardstock stuff and that can make really good pattern material because it's stiff you don't have to worry about like I just have flimsy paper here so it can especially working on ceilings it can bend and kind of move on its own and so uh, yeah use your junk mail <laughs> to get your patterns and um, it definitely works so I'm just gonna trace it so this is gonna be my ceiling material that's going to go up in the teenager's room. So if you haven't already said, um, let me know what you're working on. I'm going to try and glance at the comments um, every now and then. 
and see what you are all up to. And I know Rachel's here, so if you have any questions about the project that I'm working on, um, Rachel's really good about making sure that I see those questions specifically so that no one's lost if you're working along with me. Because sometimes I kind of go quickly. So I am going to be um, using my straight edge cutter here and the lights are kind of making my pencil really shiny, my pencil mark. I'm just going to cut this out the best that I can. And then we should have the base for our ceiling. Oh good, thank you Susan, I'm glad it's clear for you. Old credit cards are amazing as glue spreaders, definitely. If you have, if you have, um, I saw someone said the new mic is a beast. <laughs> Um, especially after like so many microphones for so long, oh, my goodness. Yeah, definitely check your mail or your um, your trash before it goes into the garbage because it may actually be miniature making treasure. <laughs> All right. So this I need to cut by hand, and I got a new Exacto knife. I'm really excited about because I had a really nice ergonomic one, but it broke. So I'm trying out this Fiskars brand. I, re I literally just got it. I haven't even used it. So it came with a nice new blade, which is always great for cutting materials um, because it goes through in just one or two cuts. Perfect. I don't have a link for it or anything. I just genuinely needed a new Exacto. <laughs> I guess maybe it's not an Exacto because it's a Fiskars brand. I don't know. A Fiskars craft knife. <laughs> Sorry, I'm missing a lot of comments. Um, let's see. I've been getting into making mini terrain models for D&D &D lately. Terrain makers and creators on YouTube just amaze me with the amount of detail they get into their terrain stuff. Super amazing. So that's where I go whenever I have to make some kind of exterior of my project. Definitely go check out terrain builders. They know what they're doing. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to sand this waxy side. Sorry, everything's shaking. That is one thing about this table is it's on wheels, which I have the wheels locked, but um, that doesn't mean it's still not a little bit shaky. I hate measuring so uh, a template is so much easier, definitely. <laughs> Everybody has their creative juices flowing. This is awesome. Okay, I'm missing what y'all are working on. Uh, making a spooky mansion D&D dice tower for a friend. Oh, that's awesome. Were you um, Amethyst Arts and Crafts? Were you the one that posted that on my work table Wednesday? Because that was awesome. I'm putting all my miniature stuffs away for the week. I have company coming next week for a few days. That's awesome. I'm currently work, working out door wood lattice with rose vine for a Barbie County house. That sounds beautiful. I'm working on a one six scale dollhouse out of cardboard. You inspired me. Oh, I can't wait for you to show me pictures. Right now I'm painting, repainting a Barbie bicycle. <laughs> I want to make it as real as possible. Um, building my orchid house into a shabby chic tea house. This is so fun. Or it's so fun. Making a two bedroom dollhouse. Very helpful. Awesome. Okay. I'm glad I went back and saw a few of those. Okay. I love to hear when y'all are working along with me. <laughs> Was that like really close up of my face? Sorry. I wasn't even paying attention. All right. Let's see if I can kind of tilt this up. 
maybe. Let's see here. Whoop. All right, so this is the pattern I cut. So before I do anything on the ceiling, I'm going to make sure, double make sure that it fits just like I want it to. And then I can do any adjustments that I need to do. So it is warping here, which means one of these ends is a little bit too long, but it feels like it's right up against the fireplace, so I think I need to cut off this edge right here. So I'm going to get my cutter, and I'm going to cut off just the tiniest, tiniest bit, and then test it again. There we go. Okay, so now it's fitting flat in there. It doesn't have that gap anymore. So I know that I am good for my ceiling cover. It's going to go in there. I'm going to look real quick. Okay, there is a bit of a gap right here, but that's okay because I'm going to be adding some crown molding in, so I'm not worrying about that too much. The other nice thing about having this smaller space is I have, I'm forced to keep myself kind of organized <laughs> so that I have room to work on stuff. Okay. I'm painting a 40 inch by 30 inch painting of my cats in costume. Oh my goodness, that sounds so cute. <laughs> I did one of uh, Stormy and um, a couple of my other dogs, or just one other dog that had passed away, and that was so fun. Okay, so now what we're going to do, let me point you back down. Nope, wrong way. There we go. <laughs> Does that work? Okay, perfect. Would you ever do a really crazy bright themed house? Um, I don't know. I think that would be fun. The other thing I think would be fun is to do a completely monochrome house or something just totally in black and white and grays. Um, maybe like an old like an old timey movie set type of scene or something. I don't know. I think that would be fun. But a really bright one. This will probably be the brightest project I've ever I've ever done. <laughs> I'm going to be using some Americana light buttermilk. I just want kind of like a light color for the ceiling. And then to make the glitter, this is folk art. It's probably backwards for you, sorry. Folk art extreme glitter. Superior coverage. So we'll see how that looks. And then the sand that I'm using is this uh, art sand. So treehouse. Um, you can get a whole thing. I mean, I've had this for a while. You can see I haven't used all of it um, for like $2.50. So it's nice to have some art grade sand because it's a lot thinner than um, if you just go outside and get some sand. Vintage military costume, and they are holding cat toys. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Thank you, Pat. Oh, it's not backwards? Oh, good. Okay, awesome. All right, so we're going to get started on this ceiling bit. And I'm going to lay down a layer of my paint. And I'm basically going to use my paint as my glue. And... I'm going to sandwich the sand between a couple layers of paint. Okay, I need to get like a little garbage can over here or something, but I don't have one over here. So I'm just going to, I don't know why I got my paint palette out. I'm just going to go straight onto the board here and just spread it out. And I will be able to see the texture of the chipboard here 
but um, once I add the sand on top, you're not going to see that anymore. It's been really weird to have my work mat over here on this table and not at my desk because I'm so used to my desk being that color. I feel like I got a brand new desk. It's just an Ikea desk <laughs> that's um, white, but I never see the white color because it's covered by a mat. So now I feel like just have a whole new, um, <laughs> a whole new desk or a different desk. And I'm going to get paint on the mat, but that's okay cleans up really easily with some rubbing alcohol. Alright, so I'm just going to spread this out. I'm wanting to do this kind of quick so that the paint is still wet. Acrylic paint dries pretty quickly and it's already starting to bubble up, but that's okay because we will be gluing it to the project and so it won't matter that it's bubbling up. So. It will be okay. Okay, so I have my paint water not on my table so that I don't spill it. I'm going to put a little bit of sand in my hand. And the best way to do this is just kind of sprinkle it from above. So I guess this is probably good to have the two different cameras so you can see how high my hand is. Um, the closer you are, uh, the more compacted the little falls are, and it doesn't spread out as evenly. I don't know if that makes sense. But I'm just kind of rubbing it in my fingers, much like you would if you were salting some food. And just trying to get as even a coverage as possible. If it's not evenly covered, it's okay because we can always add a little bit more. And so, I mean, it just depends on how, how much of the popcorn effect that you want for your ceiling. And I can tell that some of it's already dried a bit. <laughs> it's really bending now. <laughs> okay, so if you could chill a bit, that would be great. Um, I'm probably going to put this over here. I'm going to put the rest of the sand back in. missed a super chat. <laughs> Salad, please. Um, they have that real chunky sugar they use to make geo-themed cakes um, that you can just dye even. Oh. Hi, Zachary. <laughs> uh, hi, Andrea. Please do an Alice in Wonderland themed thingy. Um, I would love that. And actually, I started playing the game Alice Madness Returns, and I was very inspired by that. I really loved that game. Just the visuals of everything. I'm looking for my one, two, three blocks. Okay. I'm going to try and force this to behave a little bit here. Calm down. And... Uh, I'm going to put this back on the face cam. Uh, the Alice in Wonderland theme, Madness Returns, would be so fun. And I know Darkest Raven Designs did uh, one uh, something based off of that recently. It was so cool, and I think that would be such, such a fun one to do. I'm going to have to get this sand off. Okay. The sand does come a little become a little bit annoying. I should have put something down to catch it, but I didn't. So, oh, now I can put my comments back over here so I can see. <laughs> Catherine wants a ham on rye. <laughs> Uh, can you do a Coraline home? Oh my goodness, I would love to do the Pink Palace. I think that would be so much fun. I love Coraline, and I sorry I keep hitting my mic pack. So let me know if something goes out. Um, uh, 
I love the Pink Palace. I think that would be so fun. I love that movie, and I try to get my kids to watch it, but they are so afraid of that movie. I don't know why. I don't even think they've really watched much of it, but they just don't like it. Um, but one day, one day, I will, I will get them to watch it. Okay, so while we're waiting for this to dry just a little bit more, I want to talk to you about the roof. I might pull this over here. Okay, so if you've been watching, you will know that uh, I lost part of my roof, so the roof pieces are going to look a little bit different because I had to recut new pieces. So this goes on like so. Like so. And then <laughs> this piece goes on like this, I think if it will function. And I forgot to say thank you, Catherine, for your super chat. I was laughing at your message. I forgot to say thank you. <laughs> okay. If we will behave, then it will work. And I know in one video I had talked about making a removable roof. But the more I think about it and the more I mess with this project, I hate hearing the sand scrape on the table, the more I think it's going to be better for my project if I permanently glue the roof on. Now to make everything more accessible, I did cut the openings a bit bigger. So let me turn this back around. About to drop paint everywhere. So this roof actually went across like this and was about that low. And I cut all of that off to make this easier to view and easier to work on. I did the same on this side. This roof came down like this and went on either side of this chimney piece. So I cut it back so that it went on the back side of the chimney and um, now you can see in there a little bit better. So I feel better about permanently attaching the roof and I do think it's going to be a necessity because of how different the angles are on this house. If you've been following from the beginning, you will know that putting everything together got a little bit wobbly, a little bit warped, and it's just the quality of the wood and a combination of me wallpapering it before I put it together. All of that worked together just to make it a little bit wonky. <laughs> and so, you know, it, that's okay at the bottom, but once you get to the top, if you just have like three walls that are going in different directions, then you're going to be facing a bit of an issue. So permanently attaching the roofs is the way that I'm going to go with that. And I think, I think it'll be fine. There'll be enough room for me to move around and do things in there. This house doesn't work with a removable roof, too flimsy and unstable. Yeah, I kind of figured that out um, <laughs> while I was like thinking through it. I'm like, I don't think this is gonna work super well. <laughs> I like being able to cut out the roof to make it easier to see and work with. Yeah, it's, uh, it was really, um, like I just really liked that. Cause this, I think the attic space is my favorite part of this entire kit and is one of the reasons I was so excited to get this kit because the attic space is so unique and so I really wanted to make sure and highlight that area. The other thing I need to do is custom make this area so this roof needs to go right here because before it's like a four pointed um, tower top but now that I've extended it back, I'm going to have to custom make this piece um, because I just wanted to utilize this tower room, which previously would have been cut off.
So there's lots to do on the attic and a lot of it's going to be done off camera but I like kind of talking through my ideas because I know a lot of you if I, actually there's quite a few people who are building the fair field along with me there's several of you who are building a lot faster than I am um, but I feel like if I talk that through then well my thought process it can help others with their thought process or decide they don't want to do what I'm doing because it causes a lot of other work um, but yeah, so I just kind of like to talk through that. So while I was talking, I think our ceilings dry enough for us to do another layer because I kind of want to keep this project moving along as well. Could cardstock be used for reinforcing to reduce flimsy? Um, if you mean on the roof, um, I don't think cardstock would be strong enough um, to reinforce it very well. It could if you use like a really, really thick cardstock and a few layers. Um, probably if you really wanted to support the roof and make it removable, I would use um, mat board or chipboard to help support it. Uh, Jonathan Shane, Cro oh, okay, I just answered that. Um, I just finished up the linoleum flooring in my kitchen of the author. Arth Arthur. <laughs> Currently my home has popcorn ceilings. I grew up with popcorn ceilings and I think they were definitely a hallmark of, uh, well, I grew up in the 1980s, so 1970s, 1980s homes for sure. So I am going to go back to the detail view and we're going to work a little bit more on this piece. It's already kind of calmed down a little bit because I put the one, two, three blocks on the side. So now I'm going to sandwich the sand in between another layer of paint. So I'm just, whoop, and it's going everywhere. Put that on there. Let me grab my brush real quick. I got to clean it. Hold on. Now I have the freedom just walk around everywhere. I got to remember to <laughs> not get too wild with my walking around. Okay, so I have my brush and water, but I just went back and cleaned it up. Now it may not be perfectly glue or perfectly stuck to the paint, but doing this layer is going to sandwich it in there and it might move around the sand just a little bit, but I'm okay with that. A popcorn ceiling is kind of sporadic anyway there it's not like a um, unless you had a fancy popcorn ceiling it's not like a specific pattern at least ours never were we used to look up and we'd like find faces or people or different things in the popcorn patterns on the ceiling and then I can also if I realize there's a spot that just needs a little bit more sand I can go back and do that after this layer So let me know if anyone thinks um, they would put a popcorn ceiling in their house. I know it's not a really much of a popular thing anymore to have popcorn ceilings. And there's actually, I think, a whole industry of people who remove popcorn ceilings because people wanted them um, removed in a different type of ceiling. So let me know if you think you would ever add one in your dollhouse project. And so one thing I do want to note is when you do this, you do risk getting some sand in your paintbrush. So you want to be very careful about where you clean that out. What I like to do is clean it in a jar and make sure that it doesn't go um, down anything that has like a, like a um, what am I trying to say? The part of your sink that has the grindy thing in it. What is it called? <laughs> Uh, just because you don't want to get any like sand bits down in there. So just be careful of where you clean that and um, oops I need to do it a little bit higher. I was getting too close. So around the edges I didn't have a lot of sand so I'm going to go back and sprinkle that again. Not sprinkle my paintbrush. Um, 
we have a we have a glittery popcorn. Oh, I just lost the comment. Okay. Someone said they had a glittery popcorn ceiling. Oh, Stephanie. Glittery popcorn. We have a glittery popcorn ceiling. Hated it at first, but it's pretty at night with the lights catching the sparkles. Oh, that would be pretty. Kind of like a starry night. <laughs> Reading the announcement, I first thought Aira would hang popcorn chains at the ceiling. <laughs> Yeah, I guess um, probably if you don't, if you've never had a popcorn ceiling or if, um, I know there's a lot of people from different countries that watch the stream. If your country it was never really popular, that probably doesn't make a lot of sense. It's just a really bumpy ceiling. And I think Sean said what it was made from. Where did it come in? The bumpy surface is created by tiny particles of vermiculite or polystyrene, which gives the ceiling sound, sound deadening properties. So it kind of absorbs the sound. And I remember, because I did every now and then, you know, kids would pick the popcorn off the ceiling if you had access to the ceiling. I'm not waiting for the sand to dry on this. I'm just going over it again, which means there definitely will be sand in my brush, and I'll just have to be really careful about cleaning it out. But I do remember pulling off the little popcorn pieces and they were squishy, like a, kind of like a styrofoam type squish. Okay, so I want to make sure I get the whole thing all the way to the edges. I'm kind of, I was wanting to keep my mat kind of clean, so I wasn't going all the way to the edges, but I need to. Okay, so this is the texture that it has. And I'm going to let that dry. So kind of sporadic, but that's how popcorn ceilings definitely were. <laughs> From what I remember. Put the little blocks on there so it can dry flat. And I'm going to put the paint over here. Okay. <laughs> um, some, whoops, comments are going fast. Uh, popcorn ceilings would be good if you had teenagers, I guess. In Spain, it's made out of plaster drops instead of ceilings here. It was popular on walls. Oh, that's interesting. Bye, Rhonda. I'm making a miniature Queen of Hearts Tennyson. Uh, it's not moving fast at all. <laughs> I've always hated texture ceilings. Well, this one is actually a pretty easy one to do if you are wanting some sort of texture on your ceiling, if you just didn't want it to be a flat color. Um, I think ceilings are kind of, at least I forget them a lot in dollhouses. It's kind of like a afterthought for me. <laughs> And then all of a sudden I like am like sitting on the ground working on something and I look up and I'm like, oh, I never did the ceiling. <laughs> I never even thought about it. So I'm trying to get the ceilings um, focused on. I had already done the popcorn ceiling on this third floor that I had installed. Uh, like I said, as kind of a practice on this floor. So that one's done. And then um, I just have one, two three, three more ceilings to focus on because luckily the attic kind of has this like A-frame. What's happening here? Okay, um, the attic has this A-frame type slanted wall so I don't have to worry about the attic in there. So let me wipe off the sand again and then I'll talk to you about my idea for the roof. I think I want to do wood paneling. I want to keep the attic really warm and inviting with, of course, brown. I love a brown toned wood walled room. I think it's beautiful, um, but I do want to make it look like it's just exposed beams. And then we'll probably put um, posters up there because the attic space is going to be kind of a game room with all sorts of different games um, ar scattered around and maybe even some older like video game systems and stuff, which I think would be really fun. 
I had a popcorn ceiling growing up. Dad tried to paint it. It started to flake off and got all over the couch. The couch was on the lawn when I got home from school. We had a horrible time with it. My goodness. Yeah, I've heard it's messy to get it removed for sure. Okay, so let me move this out of the way. And then, which roof do I want to start on? I think the first thing I need to do, now that I'm thinking about it, is I need to mark out where the walls touch the roof. So that's going to help me know where I need to add interior details. So let me make sure that this is centered correctly. Okay, so that's on correctly. Correct. There we go. Um, there's a gap here that I cut a little bit too much, so I'm going to have to fill it. Those are all those little detail things that you just kind of brush off to the side until you feel like doing it. <laughs> so, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and do this so that you can see, is I'm going to take a pencil and just mark the edge of this wall on the inside of the roof. So that let me, lets me know when I'm doing the interior decoration, only go to this pencil line because there's about an inch worth of roof sticking past the exterior wall right here. So I don't want to do my interior finish on this part of the roof. So this is what I'm thinking through right now is I need to make sure that I'm marking that clearly while the roof is on the house. So I'm going to mark the other part as well. So that one is marked. Um, I don't need to mark the top. I don't know if I need to mark these edges. I'm probably going to um, kind of cheat on these interior edges that are underneath here because you're not really going to see them. So I'll probably just paint them brown and not worry about adding texture to the interior here. I always paint the ceilings, oops, missed it. I always paint the ceilings in some white mixing plaster in with the paint produces a nice finish and it can be used to fill in small cracks. That's a great tip. Um, I use paint and crackle medium in my quarter scale attic. Giggled every time I use crackle <laughs> outside of the Fairfield with crackle details. Uh, I got my wrong times. I thought you were starting in five minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. We still have, I think, about an hour. So we are, all we've done is added some sand and paint to our ceiling. And we're letting that dry because it's very wet at the moment. And I'm going to start doing some interior um, work on the inside of the roof walls. So now I'm going to mark out the interior roof walls here. And I don't really need to here because it goes all the way. Um, there's no exterior part of the roof over here. So now I can remove them. You got to do this in a certain order. <laughs> okay, so now I can remove them and I know the parts of the roof that I need to work on. Okay. Yeah, that worked. And actually, let me turn on my detail camera here. It makes sense that on the roof, the piece of the roof that I did not lose, um, the exterior wall line goes right on the edge of these tabs. So if you did not lose your roof <laughs> and you're working on this project, um, you don't really have to put it on the project to know where the edge of your interior roof line is. It's just right here along the edge of the tabs because the tabs mark where the edge of the roof is. So, okay, so let me rearrange so we can work on this roof a little bit while the ceiling is drying. Which one should I work on? Hmm. I love the size of this house. It's so cute. Yeah, it is. I I really love the size of half-scale houses. Um, 
just the furniture is so much tinier. It's crazy how tiny the furniture feels once you're used to working in 12 scale and then all of a sudden you're in half scale, you're like, oh my gosh, it is so tiny. Uh, let me show you. So this is a 12 scale stove. This is a half scale. So much tinier. And I don't know why, like the house doesn't feel that much tinier, but the, once you get to doing the furniture that works with it, just feels like a whole different world. <laughs> uh, you inspired me to get into dollhouses. This is the first live of yours I've actually caught live. Uh, thought I think I've marathon watched all your videos well thank you welcome pandora fox i think i got the name right yes it takes about six days of marathon videos 24 7 to see all of aira's videos i haven't looked up how many hours of videos i did look up the cardboard house um was had over seven hours of over seven hours oh i just laid my roof and paint oh well uh, there was over seven hours worth of video for the cardboard house so it'd take you a good half a day to watch that entire series but of course it took me a lot longer to work on it because you know I cut out all the dry times and all that kind of stuff okay I think I'm gonna work on this part of the roof let me know I don't know if that's a good viewing angle for you all let me back it up here a little. So I'm going to work on this part of the roof. These are the interior lines that I, <laughs> it's very wobbly as you can see, that I marked out for the inside of the attic wall. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start putting wood slats that go from side to side. And then after those are all down, I'm going to put wood beams that go like this because they would be holding up the wood slats that make up the roof. So let me find a good way to... Okay, I'm definitely gonna have to switch my camera around. <laughs> Next time, a learning process. This whole, like, I'm on stream, stream number 44 and I'm still learning on what I'm supposed to be... <laughs> how I'm supposed to be doing this um, but it's been I think it just using technology especially like this like I'm good with the laser cutter like I've, I've pretty much got like what I need to do down with it but it when it comes to like pushing the buttons and hooking up cords and all that kind of stuff I get lost <laughs> and so I think that's been the problem with streaming is there's a lot of experimenting and making sure that this camera works and that camera works and the audio works and if the audio doesn't work why isn't it working and I get lost in that stuff all the time I don't know what to do and part, part of it is I'm afraid to push buttons I'm afraid I'm gonna mess something up and so I don't push buttons and then the problem just say, stays because I didn't push the button <laughs> Um. I just finished the Abandoned Coffee House playlist. It was so good. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> I have the videos playing in the background. My fur babies love Aira's voice and they stay calm if I have to go out for a while. Oh, that's so sweet. I love that. I need to play my videos for my pup. Although I'm always afraid that YouTube's going to like flag me and think that I'm like trying to get more views on my videos um, because that's you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> So what I'm doing now is I'm using my easy cutter and these are just some coffee stir sticks. Um, you can just get them as coffee stirs, but these were bought in the craft section. They're wood pile and they are s slim sticks. It's just what it's called, slim sticks. So I'm going to cut a bunch of these. You could also do this with mat board, um, but I have a ton of these sticks. I never use them, and so I thought um, I there is a, a video where I make the wood floor for the attic out of 
cardstock. So if you don't have wood sticks and you do have cardstock, um, you can go see how I did that. But I wanted to do something a little bit different for the attic, just, you know, for anyone who wanted to try a different method, because in the end, it's all going to look like wood paneling, but there's different ways you can do it. So one thing I love about miniatures is you can do one thing one way and it works really well, or you could use an entirely different material, do the same thing. You could even make this out of clay. I know um, there is a very talented person um, working on an all clay wood, wood paneled wall on my work table Wednesday. And um, if you're here, let me know. <laughs> Your name eludes me for the second. I can't think, but um, just beautiful. Was it Andrea? <laughs> I think it was Andrea. Um, sending you five dollars today, but promise me the next time, press the button. Oh, press the button. <laughs> just try. Just go for it. Your chat keeps freezing. Hmm. Let me know if you have any issues. Sometimes it's, there's been definitely times on, um, oh, and thank you for the super chat, Carrie. I keep, I get lost in reading the comments and then I forget to say thank you. So thank you very much. Um, what was I going to say? I forget. <laughs> uh, yes, it was Andrea, I remembered. Yes, Andrea is doing a, a wall with wood beams, but made out of polymer clay. So it's a whole nother material um, that still looks like wood. So you could do it out of paper, you could do it out of wood, you could do it out of clay. And it's just, it's so fun. That's the fun part. Of, that's one thing I love about miniatures. All right, so what I'm doing here, you can't see me. is I've laid these sticks down. Let me move my easy cutter. I'm laying them straight across the top of the roof and then wherever I have my end line that I've made with pencil, I'm going to put a mark and then I'm going to cut that with the easy cutter. And then that is going to be my first line of wood slats that are going to make up my attic. I'm going to go ahead and just start gluing them down. Our popcorn ceiling looks about 75% dry, so just a little bit longer on the popcorn ceiling. I'm using this uh, Fabrifix glue. It, grabs really, really fast, and I've really enjoyed using it um, recently. I think formally it was known as Fabri-Tac, although it gets gunked up every single time. Hello? Okay. Let me find something to unclog it real quick. Every time it gets gunked up. Uh, let's see. I got this playing while I'm working my job from home. Now I really want to quit and just work on crafting. Yeah, I, um, I did my Adams Family project uh, blog while I was working. Hold on, where'd my piece go? While I was working at my first or my second architecture job. And I remember that feeling so much. And um, I would post during my breaks at work. I would take pictures um, of what I did the night before. And then during my breaks or during my lunch, I would post photos on my blog. And it was like my little, my lunchtime mini crafting world because this was. I don't know if blogs are still big. I don't know. I haven't been on mine in a while just because it was a lot to do a blog and YouTube also. So I did post a link from my blog to YouTube for anyone who was following. But um, it was like a little community of um, 
miniature builders that all had blogs and so you could get on and see what other people were making and comment and that was so fun. It was definitely the bright spot of my day during my work day for sure. Okay, I'm just going to start putting these on. I'm going to keep going with the wood pieces until my popcorn ceiling is dry because I do want to install it today for sure. I'm leaving a tiny gap in between the wood pieces. I'll show it to you if I can. I feel like maybe I need more light over here, but there's a tiny gap between the two wood pieces. So this is a piece and this is a piece. And then there's this gap here just because I'm going to the, you know, extent of making sure that these look like individual pieces. So I just, I want to leave that gap and I, it just gives the wall a little bit more interest. So I'm trying to keep that in mind. Now, the trick to making this look like more of a staggered wall, because typically they stagger the wood, is to take the piece that I just previously cut off from the first row and glue that down to start the second row. So I'm just going to add some glue and I think I feel like I need to get maybe the chat on my phone so I don't have to look down but then I'm afraid if I have my computer running and I have my iPad running and I have my phone running it's going to slow everything down. Uh, Jonathan Shane uh, asks, can balsa wood be used for slats and flooring? Yes, balsa wood can be used. The only thing I I always talk about whenever I say whenever balsa wood is used is that it's very um, indentable if that makes sense. <laughs> so it's really easy to um, make scratches and marks in the balsa wood. And so basswood is a little bit stronger. It's harder to make a mark on it. I have used balsa wood and sealed it with a couple coats of Mod Podge and that helps it from getting marked up. Um, if, if you're just making a room that's all the furniture is going to be glued down, it's no one's ever going to move anything in there. I think balsa wood is great. But if you're going to, if it's a playhouse um, where someone's actually going to be using it or you're going to be moving it around a lot, I suggest something a little harder like basswood or like whatever these sticks are made out of. Because then you won't just constantly be getting new marks in your wood. Unless you want marks. Some people like a really um, beat up floor. And that, I mean, I think that looks beautiful too. I love seeing when people reuse old gym flooring in their house. I think it looks amazing <laughs> because it's got all these all this history and marks from the years of being used inside of schools. I think it's cool. Okay, so I'm going to I started Can you see? Let's see. I'm just going to have to lift it up. So I started this new row with this small bit right here. And so this is going to offset my next stick. So that means that my gap that I created here previously is not going to line up with the gap below it. And that's just going to look a lot more realistic. So by adding that small piece that I previously cut off, I don't end up wasting a lot of material and it helps with my randomized wood pattern. Um, balsa wood works fine for baseboards or ceiling molding, too soft to use for flooring. Hi Jay! <laughs> yeah, it gets kind of confusing um, if you're going to a craft store because typically they will store their basswood and their balsa wood together in one storage area and it can get a little bit confusing. I sometimes get messed up like just trying to figure out which one I'm talking about because they both start with B and uh, you know if you haven't really talked about it in a while or 
or picked up any wood in a while. It's not something you have to keep in your brain. So sometimes I get a little mixed up on which one I'm talking about or which one I need. Okay, it looks like our ceiling's about 90% dry. I've got my fan going, so hopefully it'll dry up pretty soon. And I knew this sealing process was going to be a little time consuming. Well, the, sorry, the attic process was going to be a bit time consuming, but I wanted to make sure we had two projects going so that we weren't just waiting around while the ceiling, the popcorn ceiling was drying. <laughs> Gym flooring, here I go. <laughs> I know that they do, uh, I think they, it's like a reclaimed, I don't know where you buy it, honestly. I don't know where you buy it. But it's so cool because when they lay it down, um, you see the old paint from like the basketball, uh, the basketball lines, um, the marks on the floor, and um, they don't lay it down exactly like, well, the ones I've seen, they don't lay it down exactly like it was in the gym. So there's bits and there's colorful bits of paint all over, and you see the marks of the years, and it's just got this really cool look to it. So yeah, if you haven't looked up reclaimed gym flooring in-house, you should, because it's really cool. That would be really cool in a miniature project, too. I wonder if you'd have to, like, paint the gym floor first with it everything together, and then take it apart, and then re-glue it down in a different direction for it to look right. That'd be a cool project. If someone does that in miniature, let me know. And <laughs> Try eBay. Bowling alley reclaimed wood is fantastic when used as flooring. Oh, I hadn't heard of bowling alley reclaimed wood. That's cool. I like that they're reusing wood that's just not being used anymore. Okay. Um... I think our ceiling is dry enough for me to do a little bit more on that because I want to get it installed before the end of the live stream. So I'm kind of pushing on getting the ceiling done. So let me move the roof. Sorry if we're going back and forth and it doesn't make a lot of sense. All right, let's move the ceiling back in. If you're just joining us, this is our popcorn ceiling that's going in the teenage bedroom. And it's been a layer of paint, and then I sprinkled sand, and then we did another layer of paint, and then I filled in anything that looked like it needed just a little bit more sand. So now we want to make it glitter popcorn ceiling, which I personally have never seen in person, but sounds amazing. And we had one person say, I can't remember who it was, say that it looked like all like shiny and shimmery. Uh, Aira, when you worked, uh, when did you work in architecture? I actually went to school for architecture and um, I worked in architecture in the field for four years and I learned a lot. I learned that it wasn't for me for the rest of my life, but I learned a lot and I really enjoyed it. Um, and now I'm excited because I can put, use a lot of what I did learn uh, doing this. And um, when I went to school for architecture, we built models all the time. And I was always the model person in the group. And so I say I have a four-year degree in model making. So I'm actually doing more of what I did in school than probably any of my other <laughs> classmates. But I enjoy it for sure. Okay, I'm not going to put the glitter paint straight onto the ceiling because I'm not quite sure how concentrated it is. I've had this glitter paint, but I have not used it, so I'm not as familiar with it. Let me get my brush something to dry it off with. My water jug's back there so I don't spill it all over the table. Oh, Kelly, you're going to send me a picture. Okay, awesome. Or are you sending someone else a picture? <laughs> 
she did some wood strips on the attic ceiling is now back to the ceiling yes so I did I was working just now on the ceiling for the attic this is the ceiling for the kids room and we're going back and forth just because there's dry times for both so um, kind of skipping around a little bit this paint has a little bit of a silvery shine sorry my paint palette is just awful so I don't even know if you can really see I need like a special light just for this camera I think but I'm just gonna start on the edge and let's see how the glitter looks let me move my hand out of the way move to the side where am I gonna start over here make sure it's on the camera there we go so I'm hoping the glitter will kind of get caught up in the popcorn kind of take hold let me know if you can see that let me know what you think That's an awesome story on your career. So many times it's like that. Uh, in New Zealand. Wow. Hi from Texas to New Zealand. Ah, oh, sick in bed. I hope you feel better, Wanda. All right. So is that as concentrated as it should be? Or do you think it should be thinned out? This is kind of the back corner, so... <laughs> This is the corner that won't be seen as much. It looks cool. A mini ring light for the phone might work. Yeah, I might get one just for this like detail camera. Because I've never seen a glitter uh, ceiling in person, um, I'm going to go with y'all's call on... It's cool? Okay. I didn't know if it was too much or if it's not enough because we can do a couple layers if we need to. <laughs> okay. Oh, you can't see the glitter, Beth? Let's see. See if I can catch the light a little bit better. Uh, let me move one camera real quick, or one light. Let's see. Can you see better now? <laughs> I think I'm getting worse at this. Let's see. <laughs> 70, so more is better. Uh, greetings from Liverpool. The ceiling is making it look like the ones in my home. My ceilings glitter is spaced out, not overpowering. Really close together, gives it a random sparkle. Ceiling looks good. I have popcorn ceilings and now I want glitter. <laughs> Makes me wonder if it was like the, the solution for people who had popcorn ceilings and didn't want it. And they just decided, hey, let's just put glitter all over it. Okay, I'm going to try spacing it out by diluting the paint with a little bit of water and see if that makes it a little bit less overpowering so and then I'll, so I'll do two different sides and then we can decide if we want more glitter or less glitter in a dollhouse it might be good to have more because it's more likely that it'll catch your eye so that's much more spread out of course it's gonna curl my my board a little bit more because Oh wait, I'm sticking my brush in the wrong side because it's got more water. But I can still see the glitter. I don't know if it's going to come across on camera very well, but we shall see. There we go. So this side is more concentrated and this side is much more spread out. So it's this whole area here. 
I really don't think this is showing up as much as this would in a dollhouse. But let me know your thoughts. Try dabbing it with a sponge. I could do that if it I think that would probably add more. We'll see. Um I'm waiting for the house I grew up in to go during the 70s to go on the market so I can buy it back and restore it to its shaggy glory. <laughs> Diluted left side. Is that this side? I'm all turned around because of my camera. So let me know if you like it more diluted or more concentrated. I think it would be cool to put in a um, a ceiling light and make sure it's one where the light also goes up and then it would kind of be all glittery around the ceiling light. I also want to do one of those hanging bead um, covers for the door, lots of posters, a beanbag chair, it's going to be a very clear teenage room, <laughs> 70s style. Bye, Sean. <laughs> More glitter, the better. Hi, Ness. All right. Let's see. I love glitter. <laughs> Well, I think I might do a mix and give it just a little bit more. So it's kind of a medium because this was very diluted. That was very concentrated. So we'll do a mixture of the two and make the dil diluted one have a bit more glitter, but not as strong. And we'll just go with whatever comes out in the middle because I want to get it installed. We can always add more. It might also be fun to see if I could figure out how to do glow in the dark stars. I realize this is kind of in the way. If I can do some glow in the dark stars on top and just really make <laughs> the whole ceiling just an entire like overwhelming 70s experience just from the ceiling. Oh, I'm running out. I'm going to have to remix it. So adding water did kind of help make it not as strong. So if you are trying this and you want to do a glitter ceiling, you can play around with the concentrations of the glitter paint. Or you can use actual glitter, but I felt like this would be the better way to go because the glitter in the paint is already a lot finer than any of the glitter that I had in my craft storage. So we'll just go here on the edge. All right. Hi, Steph. Welcome to the live. <laughs> So it may not show up until it dries a bit because the just the wet of the water is showing up right now. So let me let it dry and then we can decide if we need more. I'm making the beaded curtain thing for your project and sending it to you. Oh, thank you. Oops, I lost your comment. Also a few other from my childhood in the 70s. Thank you so much. When I think uh, 70s, an ugly oversized sofa and a huge TV in the wooden cabinet. Not in this room, of course, but in the living room. <laughs> uh, let's see. Can you buy glow-in-the-dark paint? Yeah, I think so. The glow pigments that people use for resin can be added to paint. That's what Art and Anxiety says. So I will have to... Because um, I think that would be fun. Stars. May put some stars in the attic, too. Because I think that would be, especially like 
if I do a video game area to have the stars in there, I think would be really fun. I just want to make that a really fun area. Okay, so while the ceiling dries, let's move back to the roof ceiling. I don't know whether to call it the attic ceiling or the attic walls because technically it's both because it's an A-frame. So I don't know. What do you think? Is it walls or ceiling? <laughs> I never thought about that before. Okay, so these pieces have glued down really well. I didn't have another piece to add on to the end, so I'm going to cut a small piece. Well, actually, let me see. Yeah, I'm going to cut this in half, I think. I need to sharpen my easy cutter. Um, if you have purchased one of these, I know I've suggested it a million times, um, but if you have purchased one or are thinking about purchasing one, make sure you get one with the bolt on the side because then you can take the bolt out and you can have you can either sharpen this or um, sometimes like at Joann's they have a scissor sharpener come in and you can take in your craft scissors you can take in this and they will sharpen it for you so when this goes dull you don't have to buy a whole nother tool you just sharpen the blade so I need to do that because it's been a while but I always suggest make sure you get one with the bolt so that you aren't um, do, I don't know if they make them without the bolt but it'll save you money in the end Let's see upper interior Stars and a mirror ball. A mirror ball would be really fun. A teenage room will need a record player and loads of vinyls. I buy tubes of glow in the dark here. Um, I'm not quite sure how to say Te Tecuiti? The Q store? You have to let me know if I said that correctly. I need the classic Farrah Fawcett poster for sure. Okay, I like everything. I think I like everything about this setup except the comments. I'm just going to have to figure out how to do that a little bit better so that I'm not scooting down to see what everyone's saying. But let me know if you are enjoying this setup, if you feel like you can see and understand what I'm doing. Because I hate for it to be um, to where you can't see what I'm doing and it's just frustrating to watch. Because I want to make sure, I know it's it's more fun to see the person that's talking, so, well, at least I think it is. <laughs> but um, I want to make sure you can see the miniatures just as well, because that's why you're here, to see the miniatures that I'm making. So if you can see me well, but not the miniatures, that doesn't make sense. So make sure you let me know how you feel about the setup. And um, I'll go back and go through all the comments to see if I missed any. Love the setup. Nice to see close and wide angle at the same time. Love the split screen. Okay. Well, I thought I was going to be doing like one camera angle at a time, but if y'all like the split screen, then we'll definitely go with it because I guess it does make sense because you can see my hands here and then you can see the details and I talk with my hands so I feel bad I just constantly see my hands going like in and out of frame constantly down here <laughs> uh, but that's a family trait my mother talks with her hands also it's hard to talk if I can't use my hands for some reason um, let's see let's check on our ceiling it's drying. It's getting closer. Because the next thing we'll do is install it in the room. And I think the glitter ratio is looking really good, actually. So I think kind of a medium mixture was a good way to go. Oops, I should have cut this beforehand. I did not. So now I get to pull it off and cut it. Actually, I'm going to leave these a little bit longer because this line right here is the one that I have to fix. So I'm going to leave all these 
sticking out and then I can cut them off later once I fix that bit. So I'll show you what I mean in a second. Okay, so this piece right here, <laughs> my logo's in the way, this piece right here is sticking into this opening because this entire line uh, is cut a little bit too far over, so there's a gap that goes here between this piece and the next roof. So I'm leaving this sticking out. I can always cut it back off later, but this makes sure that if I do add something in here, I'm not having to manually go back and fix each one of these. I can just cut it off to where it matches. So instead of worrying about fixing the gap right now, I'm just going to overcompensate with the wood and I don't have to worry about it, hopefully, later down the line. Uh, gonna go quilt now. Bye, Sheila. Can any cl color glitter be used? I'm sure, definitely. I'm sure they used all sorts of colors. I like the split, split screen, but could the close-up can be an overhead shot? I think so. Um, the hand movements works between screens. I'll show you what I got. Hold on one second, because I was thinking that would work. So I found this online. It's this big snake head thing, and it attaches to the side, which is great. But um, And it said it was super strong, and it was supposed to hold up my iPad. And so the plan was that I could have my iPad where I could see it, and then I could, like, pull it over. But whenever I extend it to a certain amount, it, the iPad is so heavy that it it <laughs> falls. So I'm going to have to find something a little bit stronger than this, but I think it would work a lot better than what I'm doing right now. Um, so, but I wanted to make sure this was kind of a cheap purchase um, just to see if it would work. I think I'll probably use it somewhere else in my house where I don't want to have the top down view. But now that I know that I like this setup and that y'all like the setup and you like the dual cameras, I'm going to probably invest a little bit more money into the iPad stand so I have something that I can put top down so that everyone can see a little bit better. Because I do agree this angle is a little, it's a little too flat. I think if the camera was up a little bit more or overhead it would be better. So now that I have that in mind I can definitely do a bit more, oops, a bit more research into a boom arm that will work better. So I just want to make sure because I don't want to be <laughs> buying a bunch of things I don't end up using. Oh, it's not dry. Okay. <laughs> uh, love the setup and can hear you so well. Yay, I'm so glad we finally fixed the audio problem. If you're new here, you have no idea how long the audio problem has pl plagued this channel. And I think it was a combination of um, using a new streaming service, which is, I'm using StreamYard right now. And I just paid for one month's worth to see if I liked it. But I think I'll go ahead and pay for the rest of the year. And so it was a combination of changing. I was using OBS, which I have a feeling was a lot of my problem because uh, there were a few times where I recorded through OBS and I wasn't streaming that I had the same audio issue. So I think that helped. And then figuring out how StreamYard microphones work helped also. <laughs> and then a new microphone that stays... Um, on my head. So you might have noticed I only have one earring in because this is on my ear and goes down like this. So I feel like I should be giving like a speech at a cooking class. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I'm so glad finally got that worked out and the audio, fingers crossed, is fixed forever, is my hope. 
The only thing is this, um, I just have to make sure that I keep making sure it has power because it's not plugged in or anything. It's like on a battery pack type thing. <laughs> uh, you can also add cigarette stands, stains on the ceiling as far as I remember. Uh, clamp it down tight. tight. Um, I think the clamp works really well. It's the arm part and the arm just kind of slowly like dives in like this towards your streaming service. Thank you, Kevin. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for the super chat for the super chat. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, Aira magazines would be good for the room and also lying on the bed in the floor. I figure re records as well would be really good kind of laying all around. I know I never put my cassette tapes or my CDs back in the correct uh, sleeve, so I'm sure that <laughs> there were records lying around as well. Okay, so working a little bit more on this piece. I'm going to remember this time to cut this off. This is in the hole area. I'm remembering to cut this before I glue it, unlike last time. And there we go. <laughs> yeah, Kevin, thank you so much. And thank you everyone who sent super chats. That really does help um, the channel and I appreciate it. Also just watching uh, watching through the ads and I know they're annoying but um, that helps so much because everything that um, I get from YouTube goes straight back into this channel. Uh, stuff that comes from my store goes back into buying stuff for the store and uh, Patreon funds go into this channel as well and so it helps me do things like this upgrade and uh, make a better viewing experience <laughs> like uh, microphones and um, boom arms so that we can see a little bit better so I appreciate it for sure. All right. Um, how are we doing? Oh, okay. We'll do one more line of wood and then I think we're good to install our ceiling which is good because we only have about 15 minutes left on our stream. So that should work out really nice. I'm going to leave this opening for the attic uh, unfinished because I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I might do something that covers it. I'm not quite sure. I haven't decided, so I'm leaving it. <laughs> Hopefully I can f get it later. Okay, let's see. Cut this. And this one, I haven't, I've been neglecting this side. So I'm, I cut that too short, but that's okay. We can reuse it again over on this area. Kind of like a puzzle. Thank you, Sonia, for the five, for the five euros. I appreciate it. Uh, put your glue bottle, oh, I missed it. Put your glue bottle upside down into a glass so you don't have to keep giving it a shake. I should. I have my coffee cup. Oh, I was going to show you my cup. I got it for Christmas <laughs> from my parents. Right now it just has water because I finished my coffee, but it makes me happy <laughs> in the morning to drink coffee out of my Wednesday cup. All right. <laughs> oh, I'm dropping things. Oh, I already have one out. Hey, I'm learning so much from everybody here about filming videos, technical stuff, and online businesses. Thank you, because that's what I'm working on. That's awesome. 
Yes, you will find no shortage of knowledge on in the comments section. And I know that has been personally helpful to me several times. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to kind of fake this, I guess. I'm not quite sure what to do. I think the more complicated the corners get on the wood, the more I am not sure what I'm doing. Oh, I have a thing over here. Okay, I can put my glue over here upside down. I will do that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm missing comments because I stuck my my chat somewhere. Thank you, Sonia, and thank you, Jay Flatterman, for the super chats. I <laughs> love the cup. <laughs> Yeah, I have a few different mugs that are my favorites, and that is definitely one of them. Okay, so we shall glue this piece down, and then maybe one more piece. This piece that I cut earlier might fit here now. Yeah, that fits. I'm just going to cut a bit off. And then we will be ready to mess with our ceiling again. I think I might get out the chalk pastels. Because I like to dirty up the edges of the ceiling just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to try putting this upside down in this. We'll see if it stays. Oh, I need it. <laughs> I put it upside down, but I, like, I need it right now. Okay. So I'm going to glue this down here. And I think that is a pretty good start on the interior of our attic. And let me move it back here. So whenever the attic roof is on and you look through the opening, you'll see the wood um, beams. I guess, is it called beams? The wood structure, I guess, of the attic kind of going like this. And then I'm going to make ones that go vertical. Once I have this entire thing filled, then I'm going to make ones that go vertically like this on top. Definitely going to flip the camera for next time. And these will be, and then I'll probably put some kind of like nail holes in this just kind of fake holes where I just kind of puncture into the wood to make it look like there might be a nail there and then I'm gonna paint the entire thing brown to look like old wood and I'm gonna have this finish on the inside of this roof and the other roof so that's my plan for the interior of the attic roof areas and I just wanted to do that um, to get that started because it's going to be one of those long processes where it takes me like a couple uh, movies worth of watching <laughs> to get all the wood laid down and glued down and it's not going to be a very exciting thing to watch on YouTube. So that's how I'm going to be doing the roof uh, interiors. Okay, let me get the roof out of the way. Oh, and I don't know if I showed you, I finished framing from the last video. I did the um, skeleton dogs playing poker. And this, even though it's so tiny, I mean, it's, you know, the length of my finger and it was so tiny to paint. It's still too big for the house. <laughs> if we care, compare it to the oven... It's as big as an, as an entire stove. So I really didn't plan that out super well. <laughs> so luckily before I framed it, I took a scan of it and I'm going to scan it down, print it out, and it'll still go in the project and this will just go somewhere else. I'm sad the original painting won't be in there, but um, it's just one of those things that I'm still getting used to the half scale and it was still too big. So, 
I've got reception problems. It must be the rain. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, it must be the rain. <laughs> okay. Sorry, my comments between YouTube and StreamYard are a little different at times. Okay. S stuff's going all over the place. Here's the ceiling. Yeah, it's pretty dry. It actually has a little bit more of a texture of vinyl now, which is interesting. But can you see the glitter? You can see it's really concentrated over here, but that is going to be the part that's kind of hidden. So let's get the chalk pastels to dirty up the edges, then we'll glue it inside, and then that will probably be the end of the stream. So let me get the chalk. And this is just shaved chalk pastel that um, I use. I buy the stick chalk pastel because you can get those pretty cheap. And then I shave them down into these little cups. And then I, it's just a lot more concentrated. Now I'm going to use, make sure you use a paintbrush that you don't care about because I've learned that the chalk pastel over time uh, breaks the brush bristles and it basically sands down your brush over time. So use a brush you don't care about or is um, completely dedicated to chalk pastel because it will eventually eat your paintbrush. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to be using this dark gray chalk pastel that's over here and I'm just going to be going into the corners of the ceiling. I used a brown chalk pastel inside of the family room area because I felt like it went with that a little bit better. I'm using a gray here just because the walls are a blue. And I don't know why, I just think that'll work a little bit better with the colors I have going in there. I'm just lightly brushing it along the edges. And what it's going to do is it's going to really grab on to the sand that we put in there. So there's going to be, oh, that's still wet. If there's parts that are still wet, it's going to grab the chalk pastel as well. But the popcorn pieces are going to, I'm shaking the table, are going to grab onto the chalk pastel a little bit more. So it's going to make it look like there's like grimy bits on your ceiling. Since this is supposed to be an older home that skeletons live in, I am more than happy to age it up a little bit, so I'm okay with this. But just know that if you're doing your own popcorn ceiling and you want just a little bit of aging, but you don't want it to look like grimy bits, probably wouldn't do this on a popcorn ceiling if you want it to look mostly nice and new. This one's going to look a little bit grimy. So you can see it going around the edges here. And usually that's where kind of gunk builds up in the corners. And so that's why I'm doing it around the edge. And probably whenever I install a light, oops, Stormy's mad at someone. When I install a light in the middle, I will um, add some gunk around there as well. Because, uh, dirt and dust will definitely build up there as well. So I'm going to go all the way around. And finish that up real quick. And then I'm going to use a hand vac to vacuum off any excess so that it's not falling inside my room. Put some water stains on the ceiling. That's a good idea too. <laughs> okay, so let me get my hand back real quick. I probably won't put water stains on this ceiling, but I have three or four, 
three, four. Four other rooms. Um, definitely in the kitchen, I will probably put some water stains, a few more stains in there, because um, the kitchen gets a lot of moisture. So let me get my hand back real quick. And, oh, it's not in here. Hold on. Get my keyboard vacuum. My keyboard vacuum, if you've never seen these before, it's a little handheld vacuum and I use this for my laser cut pieces because, because it has this smaller bit right here. I can easily clean and vacuum the edges that the laser cuts uh, because whenever I send out my kits I don't want someone to just get an entire bag full of laser ash. There's still some on there but this gets a lot of it off so I'm going to use this real quick. It's a lot quieter than my um, my big hand vacuum. So here's the ceiling. I can always add a little bit more, but I also want to put the crown molding in there uh, before I go just go all out on the ceiling. So let's glue it in and then I think that will be the end of our live stream today. Hopefully we'll get to see it in there. Well we will. We will. It shouldn't take too much. I'm going to clear off the space a little bit because I'm going to have to lay it on its side. It becomes more and more difficult to lay this house on its side as it grows, but I could never lay the Adams Family on its side, so I guess I'll just call it a perk that I can do it at all. Okay. I think I need like one more table that's just my junk table, just a small table where I can just put all the stuff I don't need to use. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's get this going. Actually, maybe I don't need to lay it on its side. Let's see if I can do something so that may be a little bit awkward for me, but it may be easier for you to see. There. Does that work? I think that works. All right, so I'm going to make sure it's going in like this, and I sanded this side because this is food packaging. So I sanded that so it's going to um, have good adhesion to the ceiling, which the ceiling is just uh, primed wood. I didn't put anything else on here, it's just the wood that came with the kit with a prime, just white acrylic paint basically. I'm going to be using my Fabrifix glue that I've been using and it does work to put it upside down in this thingy so I'll have to remember to do that. I'm going to put glue on as much as I can to cover the whole thing because this is going to help make sure that it doesn't pop up anywhere. Using a thicker material like this food packaging is really helpful as opposed to the cardstock that originally I was thinking about using. Cardstock, because it's thinner, is more likely to bubble up, make smaller bubbles. But the packaging, because it's thicker, will probably hold its own a little bit better once every part of it is glued. I think I just need to clear out the entire head of this glue bottle again. It was coming out blue, beautifully, beautifully yesterday and today it's just not a happy camper. There we go. Nope, it came out for a minute or a second actually and then it didn't want to anymore. Okay, let's try that again. The pains of messing with a clogged glue bottle. And now I've got glue all over my fingers. Okay, I just want to make sure I get it really good in the corners, really good in the center, so that everything glues down as best as possible. 
and this glue typically takes hold really quickly. So hopefully that will work. I'm going to avoid getting it on the fireplace. All right. Now I'm going to press all over, making sure that it touches every area and there's nothing sagging down. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. We're just putting in the glitter ceiling and I don't I don't have any glitter coming off on my hands, so it is fully stuck on the ceiling, which is great. I don't like loose glitter in my projects because I feel like I can't ever get it all. So I'm gonna bring you a little bit closer. And it was probably gonna be hard to see the glitter. I'm going to add crown molding. It looks like a mess right now with that, um, <laughs> with the chalk pastel, but I'm going to add crown molding all around. And let me show you the other room, how it came out, because the chalk pastel looks better with the crown molding. Hold on. Sorry. Sorry. I'll get it eventually. There you go. So once you get the crown molding in, and have the chalk pastel go around the outside. It looks, it, may, it seems to make a little bit more sense, I think. So once I get the crown molding in there, hopefully we'll look just a little bit better with the aging on the edges. So I don't know what color, I guess the, the window's brown, so maybe I should do brown. Um, let me know what you think. <laughs> Make sure it's as flat as I can get it, I think. Yeah. And that's the easiest way to put in a ceiling, I think, is to make a pattern and then, uh, work on it flat on your worktop and then glue it in because trying to work up inside of a room is nearly impossible and you'll get a bunch of like arm and shoulder aches <laughs> and it can be hard to work like that. Brown, yeah, I think it might. You considered a gimbal. I'm not quite sure what a gimbal is. Is that a camera thing? It might be. I've heard the term before. Brown molding? Okay. I'll do brown and then I'll add some more um, some more chalk pastel and then I'll try to post a picture whenever it's done. So let me think. The next thing that I want to do, oh the next the next thing I want to do is paneling for this room. This is the adult room, the grown-up room. But saying adult room sounds weird. <laughs> this is the grown-up room, and or the parents' room. I don't know. And I want to do wood paneling all the way around. I've had wood paneling in my Adams family house, and I have wood paneling in the um, captain's quarters. So it's pretty easy to do. But I think I'm going to do part of the wall on stream because it is going to be a very a very iconic look, I think, for this project. So that might be the next one. Let me know if you're interested in seeing that, how I'm going to do some wood paneling in there. It's going to be smaller because it's in half scale, but I do really like wood paneled rooms, so. <laughs> so anyway, I think that's it. Thank you, Rachel, for helping mod the live stream. Thank you, everyone, for being here and for helping with the suggestions and for helping me test out this new setup. I'm definitely going to try and get um, a boom arm for the iPad so the angle's not as weird. But I think everything other than that went pretty good. 
So I hope you all have an amazing day. And our next live stream will be, this is May, June, second Friday in June. And um, I will see you then. So <laughs> bye, everyone. Okay, now I got to, okay, <laughs> got to figure out how to work the iPad again. Bye.